Hi guys, I'm Michael Van Beek. I want to talk a second about uh, an old rivalry um, in martial arts, and that's sports versus street. Um, and I want to kind of get to it using a scientific method um, that will break this down and hopefully help you understand it better. Okay, first I want to do first thing I want to do is I want to break it down to competition, martial arts, and violence. So it's not necessarily sport. It's comp competition, so we'll use it that way. And street, what I mean by street isn't two idiots fighting in the street that are drunk. I mean innocent people saving their lives from the entity of violence. So let's look at the characteristics and understand them both so we can really get a, a better opinion on that, okay? We're going to use uh, the assistance of science and look through the scope of science to help us better understand that. First, when we look at, we need to understand, first and foremost, that Sport or competition is symmetrical and street is asymmetrical. So one is even, one is not even, right? And so based on that parameter alone, skill and rules set the symmetrical or even environment. And so the, the characteristics are they're athletic, they have parameters, there's a fixed environment, there's a high level of refinement. So what I want to do here is I want to use skill and rules as our two main intertwining characteristics. This is asymmetrical, so an active attacker and definitive pressure. Okay? So we're going to use those as our intertwining references. And the characteristics are mass attack, weapons, bigger and stronger, and no rules. No, it's the environment. It's not a fixed environment. Anything goes. Okay? So now what we see here is these characteristics run by these two boundaries create a fingerprint or a DNA model. So if you just said, hey guys, what sport martial arts has, or what martial arts has athleticism, it has parameters, it's a fixed environment, i.e. a referee, okay? We have a refined art, like a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or a Judo or a boxing. You would be able to say, Sport. And that's the DNA of sport. It's reflected in all of these things. Similarly, the same is true over here. It's uneven. Active attack and definitive pressure. Mass attack. Weapons. Bigger, stronger. So the DNA of martial arts or counter violence arts are completely different than the DNA of sports. Completely different, right? To the novice, they look the same, but they're completely different. All right? Why are they different? And I'm going to go into using a scientific explanation of why. And that's how we learn. It's input versus output. Okay? So what we're going to use is we're going to use sensory cues. Sensory cues. That means a visual cue. A cue of a feeling, right? Uh, uh, when I'm doing a pummeling with somebody, or doing an energy drill, or rolling with somebody, you have a cue of when to do what. That's your input. Okay? You match that with a physical response. Okay? Your physical response is your output. Sensory cue. So if someone feeds a jab at me, my instructor, coach, or I've learned to parry the jab or to shoot, okay? What I do, my output is going to match my input. So if, if, if it's a shoot, maybe if it's wrestling, my output is going to be a sprawl. If I'm doing boxing, my input is a jab, my output may be a parry or a counter punch, okay? If I'm doing this, I may pick a destruction. I may pick, he slashes at me with a knife, I may pick to cut the hand. So your input matches your output. It has to, right? If you're doing Wing Chun, your input is a straight punch, your output is a bong sour, whatever it is they do. Okay? So, now, my physical response. This equals a cognitive association. Okay, or like a, a cognitive bridge, okay? I don't know if I spelled it right. <laughs> ASSO. Okay, thank you. Okay? So, my, my sensory cue 
plus my physical response. Those two together create a cognitive bridge, a cognitive association. I see something, I do something. Right? Wow. Now, times repetition equals a neural pathway. Dun, dun, dun. Your neural pathway, your response, your reaction, what you do without thinking. Okay? So repetition slash drill um, training. Okay? Your repetition is your training. So, to make sense of this, my sensory cue is going to be determined by who, what am I fighting on the street? My cue is going to be different than if I'm fighting here. So my output will be different. My physical response. If I'm fighting one person in a sport, I might want to pull him into my guard. If I'm fighting two people, one's trying to give me my head a boot party, kick me, and the other's trying to kick me in the groin, neither one are going to try to pull me. It's going to be different, folks. So, the argument of sport versus street is a stupid argument. It's like saying which is better, tennis or racquetball. To the novice, they appear to be doing the same thing, but they're completely different. Ask a bodybuilder and a power lifter. To most people, they're the same. To them, they're not. Okay? Ed Cohen's shaking his head back there. So, as we see, how do we learn? We see something, a cue, a sensory cue, sight, sound, hearing, okay? Feeling, touch, and we have a response. Our response is based on a parameter of a fixed environment of that art. This is based, your response on this is going to be based on how to survive this. Right? I have... There's people out there who think because they can do this, they can do this, not so. Okay, you may do okay with it. I'll give you an example. I fought along guys like Matt Hughes, same card as Dan Seven, right? In the 90s, yeah, great professional cage fighting record. I still don't claim to know this, right? I do claim to know this, but I know enough about this to know that I wouldn't do this. It's not my game, it's not where I'm at. I don't indulge in the this versus this. The DNA is completely different. To the novice, oh, we're both doing kicking and punching, right? But the comfort of a fixed environment allows you to refine that art. Having no fixed environment, no referee to save your life and, to, you know, begging for your life and telling people you have kids, please don't kill me, brings you differently. So you have to train for this DNA or train for this DNA. There is no versus, okay? Right? Neural pathway. Neural pathway through training, input, output. Okay? So understanding the science of how we learn says, okay, well, if a wrestler just shoots me, I'll, I'll sprawl. No, you won't. You've got to train it. Live as you train, train as you live. If you live this way, you train this way. If you live this way, you train this way. Okay? I hope this has kind of helped clear that up a little bit. And we're going to follow it up with some more training tips in the near future. All right? www.focuscounterviolence.com. I'll talk to you soon.